Hey kids, welcome to Rob's Red Hotspot and welcome to a Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial guide. Today we're going to be talking about uh, naval refits in the uh, No Step Back patch. Uh, I've seen a few videos out on naval refits. Most of them are focused for on Axis powers and in particular I've seen guides that focus on uh, taking heavy cruisers, or sorry, light cruisers for in countries like Italy and, and that don't have a lot of um, capital ships and turning your light cruisers into heavy cruisers by changing the battery. And, and then, you know, at that point you can stick a bunch of, you can stick a bunch of uh, light attack on them basically. And, uh, and, and, you know, you, you can basically take a country that doesn't have capital ships and give it capital ships by turning light cruisers into heavy cruisers uh, fairly cheaply, right? Uh, and I've seen that. I haven't seen very many guides for um, allied countries and countries that start with larger navies and stuff like that. Uh, and also there's a few new mechanics. Um, well, there's one or two uh, new mechanics in No Step Back that, uh, that I think changed some new things. And I haven't seen a lot of emphasis on naval refits. Um, a lot of people, when they talk about naval strategy, uh, again, people are playing as Germany or, or other countries and they just want to spam subs or they just want to spam destroyers. It's not a very involved way to play the Navy. I'm just going to uh, merge my fleets here. Um, it's not a very involved way to play the Navy. And uh, I, I'm going to argue that uh, the, the strategy I'm going to suggest here is going to be equal or better than some of the really spammy uh, strategies out there. So let's just grab all these fleets here and merge them into uh, one. Okay, so uh, first off, uh, there is something you're going to want to do at the start. Obviously, you're going to want to uh, set your fleet to exercises. So you're just going to click on automatic split off and then, you know, get them exercising. And you're going to wait until you save up 35 naval experience. I'm just going to give myself the experience in the console here so that it doesn't take me forever to record this video. Now, as soon as you have 35 naval naval experience, uh, you're going to go into the officer core here, and this is one of the f new things with no step back, and you're going to go to the spirit of the navy. Uh, there's other stuff in here. Um, most of it's just kind of okay. Uh, the best thing you can do here, 35 points, you should do this at the beginning of the game, um, even if you aren't doing refits yet. Do it at the very beginning of the game because uh, naval refit yards uh, is going to give you ship refitting speed of 25%, which is huge, but it's also going to give you ship repair speed of 15%. So even if you're just uh, exercising your fleets, uh, it's going to free up dockyard, dockyard capacity uh, for refitting and eventually building new ships. So yeah, grab that uh, right away. First thing you do with your navy should be to grab the naval refit yards. Uh, next up, uh, let's talk about how to refit ships and how to refit ships efficiently, because uh, I am going to argue that refitting ships is always better than building new ships um, for a variety of reasons. Um, obviously, eventually, you're going to want to rebuild ships. You're going to want to build new ships, sorry, even as the UK, because, you know, for one thing, if you look at the UK's Navy, we've got uh 15 30 we've got what something like 36 capital ships i don't know if i counted that right um 36 capital ships and we basically don't have enough screens to screen all those capital ships so we're not even we're not even be able to use these ships um so yeah you are gonna you know you are gonna want to eventually build some new ships um but i would argue that you are much 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 better off to refit all of your screens all of them um now obviously it's going to depend on what your aims are and what your strategy is i played a democratic uk run uh recently i actually tested this i did a few runs to test this uh and i found that if you're smart about your refits you can refit every all of your submarines and all of your destroyers and light cruisers by early 1939 all of them uh, and so, yeah, uh, it's really, really worth doing. Uh, it doesn't involve a lot of technology research at all, uh, cause you don't have to research any new hulls. Um, obviously you you might want to research new hulls later, but you can put off a lot of that research and really focus on, you know, a handful of key technologies. Uh, the other thing you're going to really want to do before you start doing refits, well, it depends. Um, if you look at the ship designers here, we've got a few different options. Um, 
for the UK, we've got uh, escort fleet designer here, which is max range, sub detection, and max speed. And we've got this one's for carriers, so that's no good. This one as well is for carriers, not very useful. And you know, these are all capital ship ones. I don't recommend any of these. I would take this one. All right. Uh, and yeah, let's start looking at how we would refit these ships. So first off. At the start of the game, um, I'm just going to show only the naval stuff here for a second. Uh, shift click here. Uh, I would finish every hull in here, right? Um, it's a real waste of production to get rid of these, and we're going to refit them all anyway. Uh, and, and the refits are only going to add a f maybe a few hundreds to the production cost of each of these ships, and we're going to turn these kind of bad designs into perfectly good designs. While you finish up your starting... Um, your starting queue of ships, you're going to research the technologies that you need to refit your ships. You're going to, you know, get that. You're going to unlock uh, this guy. You're going to hopefully get uh, uh, a ship designer as well. Obviously, whether or not you get this, I mean, this is really key. If you're going to refit, you should really do this. But when what the timing of all this is going to matter is going to depend on your other goals. Obviously, there can be you know, more important things to do than than grabbing this guy at the start of the game. But um, but you you try 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 and get a ship designer if you're if you're going to refit. It makes it a lot more worthwhile. And I'll show you why. So I, I usually start with the cheapest ships right away. It's going to depend again. Um, like I said, uh, you uh, if you're playing as the UK, uh, I refit the entire all the submarines, all the destroyers, and all the light cruisers by early. It was early, maybe it was like mid 1939. So my last ships were coming out of the refit yards um around the time the war started and which meant i had you know and that, at that point i could start building new ships to to increase my pool of escorts and you know building convoys and stuff like that so um let's take a look at the classes that we start with i'm gonna untick i'm gonna tick uh, show outdated equipment here this is very very important uh and mm -hmm. What you're looking at, so for the subs, it's very simple. We've got two classes of subs. One of them, they're both um, they're both uh, level one subs. So uh, one of them's got one torpedo tube. One of them's got two torpedo tubes. Okay, so we actually don't even need to make a new design here. You can just go like this and just grab all of our OPR class submarines, which are those ones, and we can right away. Just double click them to select all the ones of that class. Go up here, refit ships. And you can see for 4,000 production, 4,000 production, we're going to refit 33 ships. And you might say, yeah, but they're still shitty level one submarines. Well, that's wrong. That's wrong. That doesn't make sense because what you're doing is you're doubling. You are doubling the number of torpedoes. So. 4,000 4, uh, naval dockyard production points, whatever they're called, to refit 33 ships, to double the, double the torpedoes on 33 ships. This is a steal. This is a steal. Uh, and, I, you know, sure, they have shitty range. Who cares? Just use them near a naval base. Like, it's not a problem. So definitely worth doing. Um, let's look. Next, next, I would refit. After I refit the subs... He was going to get bonkers. After I refit the subs, or while I'm refitting the subs, I would probably go into naval research here. Okay. Um, in terms of naval research, what you should do in the first years, I mean, obviously do all your industrial research, do your land research you need and stuff like that. But if you're going to research um, techs early, uh, these ones here that have a skill bonus, uh, because we have the Euro ship builders, we get a bonus to sub detection. So we're going to be throwing sonar on like every ship. Um, it's worth it because we're this is going to get boosted by that. So I would grab active sonar here. Um, you might want to upgrade the airplane catapults on cruisers. Uh, that would be a good thing to research reasonably early. It is only forty days to research, or I guess fifty if you don't have the um, Euro ship builders. Maybe uh, these texts here. Uh, this uh, you know you could you could also upgrade the torpedoes on your on your um destroyers uh if you wanted to although i probably wouldn't but you could uh it's really up to you depends on what your strategy is going to be 
but uh, it's going to be reasonably cheap to throw. So, you know, I, I would I would pick pick one of those three and and research it early so that you can refit it onto some of your older ships. Uh, is is the gist of what I'm saying? And in the case of the UK, the one you're going to get the most bonus from is active sonar. So, I would go for that. Um, other naval techs. I just want to comment about naval techs here. A lot of people don't realize this tech, magnetic detonator, as well as like the other related techs here, um, and. Uh, these three techs, this one in particular is good. Uh, this one increases light attack on every kind of ship. Uh, so that's excellent. And basically any gun, as well as the damage control and fire control methods, these are good techs. But you, there's no rush to research these. You can research these in 1943. The bonus is applied instantly, and it's applied to all your ships. All your ships go from using the basic light battery, the, the, the sort of... On the non-upgraded shells, these I call these techs here like ammo techs, right? These are like almost like doctrine techs. Like this is like damage control, fire control methods. They're not actually upgrading any of the hardware on your ship. They're just making better use of hardware you already have. So, in the the gist of what I'm saying in terms of tech is research the hardware that you need uh, to do your refits and eventually to build your new ships early on, uh, so that uh, you know don't don't. Don't research new hulls while you're going to do refits. Wait to do your rate. Re wait until you're done your refits, and then research new hulls. Okay. Uh, next up, the other text I would do as the UK uh, as soon as possible. Um, you're going to want decimetric radar level one. So that's going to give you. And these these a lot of people didn't use to research these texts, but now you get the better tank radio out of them too. So there's actually some pretty good synergy with naval and armor research now. So this is this is a big change. This is one of the other big changes in No Step Back that changes. I think I think eventually will change the naval meta uh, once people stop building fucking sub spam. Okay, so uh, decimetric radar uh, level one. Actually, let's look at that again here. Um, it gives you. Uh, Gives you surface detection five, so that's that's not super great. But if you rush to so level two here gives you sub detection two, so that starts to be useful for the UK. Um and surface detection seven. And then the, the real big one here is cent centimetric radar, the third one here. Because Suddenly, you're, uh, first of all, you're getting the advanced radio for tanks, which is excellent. So the sooner you can get this on your tanks, the better. Second of all, uh, you're getting surface detection 12, sub detection 6, light attack plus 5%, heavy attack plus 5%, anti air plus 5%. So this is huge. This is really, really, really worth researching as soon as possible. Uh, as the UK, one way to get to that tech really fast from the start is to go through down to radar here limited rearmament, air defense, radar. Uh, you can beeline that tech. So. Really, really worth doing. I mean, obviously, you're gonna. There's other stuff you're gonna want to do, perhaps before you do that. But get it as soon as possible. Um, refit it onto ships as soon as possible. That level three radar. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily uh, go crazy getting that to put on my old destroyers. Um, but I would. This is something in the late game. If you can, if you can kind of manage micromanaging, like um, refitting capital ships while you're at war. Uh, this is worth putting on your capital ships because you're giving them, let's look at it one more time here. Uh, you're giving them all, the, all their guns are getting a 5% boost, plus they're getting the surface detection and sub detection and anti-air. So basically, you know, everything that's a gun on the ship is getting, is getting a bonus. Uh, these other techs here, let's see here. Yeah, this one doesn't... I start to lose interest a bit in the 1941 and 1942. The 42 one is good for, for ships. It's it's certainly good um, in the sense that it just gives you these really this really big stat boost. But I don't really see... I don't really see rushing this uh, because the, the level 3 tech... The level... I guess it's... What is it? Improved centrometric radar here. It really only affects your land-based radar, which... I don't know. If you're building a lot of land-based radar, I guess it makes sense. But the real, the one that makes the most sense before the war starts, uh, if you're doing a historical run, or really, you know, as soon as possible, is this one. This is the one that's going to give you the most benefit, most bang for your buck. So um, let's look at some of the other refits that we would do. We've already covered submarines. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just double the torpedoes, right? So we're going to want to make sure show outdated equipment is on here. Very important. Um, and 
take a look at some of the refits that we would do for our screens. And and like I said, um, it's really more worthwhile for the UK anyway to uh, to do screens than it is heavy ships. I would add that radar on maybe later for the heavy ships. Okay, so start with our cheapest ships and get to know your templates before you before you start. Um, you know, putting refits in the queue. So we've got this S-class destroyer. Start with the ones with the the, the smallest production cost, uh, and we can see that one. And the and then you've got the VW class destroyer here. And you can see the only difference between the VW and the S-class is that the VW class has anti-air. So if you want to save on points, you can actually just make one refit template for both of these. Uh, but it's very important that you don't just grab like you, first of all, you can only refit level one destroyers with a level one temp template. So you can't you can't just take all of these ships, the S class, the VW class and the ABCD class and refit them to EFGH here. You, you can't do that um, because it has to, it, the hull isn't the same. Like level two hulls are bigger hulls than these ones. So it's just not the same thing. Um, the other thing I would advise you to check is don't refit engines. Uh, refitting engines is very expensive. Uh, and it's also just not worth it. It's just it's just it's not worth it, in my opinion, to uh, change the engine on a ship. Uh, the same goes for armor. If we're looking at light cruisers, let's take a look at lander class and town class. Yeah, okay. So if I make a template here, let's say I just want to throw, uh, I guess, what what's the radar that we said was, I think it's level three radar, yeah. If we were just going to throw level three radar on the town class here, um... We don't want to use the town class template, refit template, to refit the Leander class because going from level one to level two armor is very expensive. So just you, for every, you're going to have to get a sense of what the engine, there's three things you need to look at basically when you're making your refit templates. You need to look at the hull, the armor, and the engine. And those are three things I just wouldn't, I wouldn't refit. So uh, let's go back to destroyers here and kind of work our way up work our way up through through these uh, templates starting with the i guess the s class and the vw we can use one template uh we could make a separate one for the s class if we decided we didn't want to pay to put anti-air on the um on the s class ones but eh, whatever so for these ships uh they're fairly slow but check this out if i just put um okay i would Probably I would be putting level one radar on these if I just put, but if I just upgraded, let's, let's assume I haven't researched radar yet. Um, if I put the level two sonar on this or even level one sonar from, okay. Um, you might think like, oh, well, I'm not going to refit a ship for just 4.5 4 sub detection. Well, you're not just getting that. You're getting 4.5 sub detection plus three max speed and 450 max range, right? Uh, I would tend to maybe stick an extra torpedo launcher on there too. So I've just doubled the torpedo attack as well. All of that for 236, 236 refit cost. Okay. So get, uh, let me like, I'll just show you like the kind of shitty destroyer that people spam when they don't want to fuck with their Navy, when they just want to not pay attention to the Navy and just build the same ship the entire game. They're probably going to build something like, I don't know. Uh, they're just going to stick a deep light battery and like a couple torpedo tubes on a ship or something like that. This already here is 836 to produce. So I can refit. Go back here, set this up again here. Stick a torpedo on there. Stick a level one sonar on there. I can, I can refit four destroyers. So in refitting those destroyers, I'm increasing their their range, I'm increasing their speed, I'm increasing their torpedo attack, and and I'm throwing in some sub detection to boot. I can refit four destroyers for the cost of building one new new destroyer uh, in a fraction of the time. So let's save this template here. I I use a naming scheme when I do this. So this is going to be my refits for oh, sorry, I'll get out of your way. Uh, S V W class refit. Uh, if you want to, if you have another naming scheme that you prefer. I would my advice to you is rename it with the same class names uh, as the 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 basic ones as the historical ones and then put refit on it just so that when you go to your navy so let's save this now and this I'm just doing this like obviously if I, I would put better radar or sonar or whatever if I had access to it but I'm going on the assumption of what you're likely to have when you're actually refitting these so maybe better sonar you know um I, I might get to sonar level two or something with 
push this right up to 8.8. .8. So SBW uh, class refit, there we go. And now when we go to our Navy here, we can just select, we're just gonna go up to the, there's actually an S class for the subs too, so don't get confused. Uh, go up to the BW class here and double click it and then hold shift, double click, all right. And then we can just hit this refit button here. And you can see here, 20, look, okay, first of all, if I hover over this, I can see all the stats I'm changing. So we're getting, for there's 76 destroyers that we're going to refit here. Um, each one is going to get plus 7.8 sub detection, plus 18 torpedo attack, plus 2.7 max speed, plus 450 uh, max range, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right, so so pretty pretty huge, uh, and you can see actually this 10 S class and 46. Like you can look at the effects of refitting here. If you were to build the you know the equivalent of this, like like just when you're when you're doing a refit, think about what you'd be able to get for for that. Right, what you'd be able to get for that is something like 20 to 25 very basic destroyers with none of the none of the sub detection. You know they'd be much slower than these. Uh, they might not even have the range. So you're turning 76 ships that you already have into substantially, substantially more useful ships. So that's a no-brainer. Um, I would then, you know, as you're progressing here, and this you'd be doing this over the course of a few years of gameplay, just progressively working your way. Start with the oldest classes and work your way up to the newest classes. And the key thing is, yeah, you can see here it gets the Euro shipbuilding bonus, which is just huge. Um, so yeah, this ship here, for example, um, I wouldn't change much. Uh, the A, B, C, D class, we've got engine two. Um, we've got a level one hull. Uh, and yeah, so I might just add anti-air and I could do one of two things. I can either replace the replacing fire. Um, if you, if you don't have a lot of light attack, then you don't need the fire control system. So you can replace that with like that. And then you know, I, I'm assuming that I would probably only have access to like radar one when I was refitting these ships, but you know, radar one, radar two, whatever. And you see right away, refit cost is 382. You know, it depends on how what your time frame is. Um, I might even forgo the anti-air and just do the sonar, maybe the radar too. Wouldn't be worth. Wouldn't. Wouldn't really be worth putting. Wait. Just see here. Wouldn't really be worth putting. Well, you could put you could put radar one for some surface detection. Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, but at least you could just do the sonar. Uh, but again, we're getting like 242 for a couple changes here. Depends. It depends on how many you want to do. But I I might stick the anti air on too. Probably not though. But yeah. Let's just go but reset to the original one here. Yeah. Sonar, radar. And just radar one if you didn't have radar two yet uh, even just adding radar one and, and sonar two there uh, 242 for the refit costs and yeah uh so that well, i didn't name, i didn't name it you can actually rename these so just go back in here it was the a b c d class a b c d class refit so you get the idea here there we go and yeah again just look at the cost of building one of these new you know 1155 but the cost of refitting them is 240 so you know, it's really, really good. Um, and some of you might be looking at these templates and being like, ah, but those that doesn't look like a good template. Like that ship is kind of a jack of all trades. It's not like people really like to build these specialist ships uh, in Hearts of Iron 4. And it's like if you're building new ships, it's, it is much more effective to build cheaper hulls and and often or to or to have ships that are like specialists that only do one role, you know, like stacking, stacking three uh, people do this thing where they stack they take like a cruiser and uh, they stack. Where is it? They stack a bunch of these on it, and like that cruiser just does recon and stuff like that. And yeah, okay, I get, I get that. Like building a really basic design that's very specialized in a role or whatever is is better when you're building a new ship than than something like this. But remember, it's not about the end result of the template. It's about how much bang you're getting for your buck. So. Let's go back to this fleet here and grab the ABCD class and just double click it again. Upgrade ABCD class refit 8000 production. What are we getting for that? Five surface detection, 3.8 sub detection, three max speed, 450 max range. 
So all that for eight eight thousand production, which is nothing. It's really nothing. Um, and so obviously, like you know, you might want to stop there if you were planning on going to war in like I don't know nineteen thirty eight or something. Uh, or you might want to just plan around refitting part of your navy at once and maybe not refitting all of your destroyers at once and stuff like that. So the the, the, the kind of schedule you go on refitting these um, is going to depend on when you go to war and, and, and how you're playing the game, whether you're doing some crazy fascist thing or, you know, whatever. Uh, if you're doing Democratic UK, you're going to have a lot more time to do these refits. Uh, it's partly why I like playing Democratic as the UK, because you get to you get to fuck around with your navy a lot more uh let's go back over and look at the next level of ship though so um you know again I, like i said I, I can't emphasize this enough start with your worst ships and work your way up because that way you're going to be you know you don't want to be putting if i've just finished researching like level you know i've just finished researching level four radar i don't want to put a level four radar on a you know on, on my oldest destroyer hulls. I want to put that on the ships that I think are going to be the most useful. So taking a look at this ship, for example, we're up to 40 knots because it's got a level two engine on a on a level two hull. So I would even I would even make this like a spotter ship, right? Max range is 2340, which for a level two destroyer is pretty good. Uh, and yeah, we've got 24.2 sub detection, 41 point eight surface detection with uh, with a destroyer like this you don't even need light cruisers to do your to do your scouting right so uh that's pretty awesome I, I in fact it might even be worth yeah it might even be worth for going uh, i would even on these guys i would stick the anti-air uh you know, and if you do want to update uh, let's just call this efgh so i this is a this is a refit i would be doing around like 1938 1939 maybe right i would be getting around to this once i've once i've unlocked these technologies and stuff like that All right that and i'm going to show you just how fast these complete that's why i'm actually doing them in the game here obviously you're not going to do them all on the first of january 1936 but so let's go and grab this 8775 is the refit cost on this and just look at what we get. Plus 18 surface detection, plus eight, plus 19 sub detection. And like, again, you might think that surface detection and sub detection are not that good stats. But like, I'm sorry, increasing them by 18 points for like 300 production, it's worth it. Um, it's definitely worth it. So let's just put that, throw that in the queue there. Next up, let's take a look at light cruisers. Uh, so once again, we're going to show all the outdated equipment here, and we're going to look through all these classes and see see what the difference is here. So the British light cruisers have torpedoes on them, which is a bit weird. Uh, the historical ones have torpedoes. A little bit of a weird choice. Uh, my feeling about light cruisers, light cruisers are, destroyers are cheap ships, right? Destroyers are cheap ships, and so you're going to want to focus on um, the radar and sonar upgrades for them. That's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Uh, is And that way you can use them. You can use them to patrol uh, in your patrol fleets. Like if I was going to go with that really, really good level, high level radar on these EFGH class destroyers, I would probably just have these be my patrol ships. I wouldn't use any light cruisers in my patrol fleets. Um We'll see, you know, I, I'm not sure, uh, but because I've got these super fast destroyers, they're going to be really hard to, they're going to run away really easily. So when they're patrolling, you just set them on do not engage. Uh, they're going to uh, be super good at detecting uh, enemy fleets because of that super high level radar uh, and as well as detecting subs. So uh, I might not even bother using light cruisers, um, as in those patrol fleets, I might just put stacks of like, I don't know, six, five to eight of, of these guys. Um, and I think you start with 30, some of them. So yeah. Um, so you'll have, you'll have enough basically. Uh, in fact, if you refit every light ship in the Royal Navy, you're only going to need another 50 or 60 by the end of the game. Like you're not going to need to build that many new ships. You've got a big enough Navy basically at the start of the game, right? So better off refitting than building new ships. So for something like this though, this is a level one, a light cruiser, and you're going to have to do it for each hull type, right? I mean, it's pretty important. Let's go back to it. There we go. Um, we're going to have to do this for each one. So we've got the C class here, the Dan A class, also known as the D class. So C class, D class, E class, just for Royal Navy buffs. These, these were not actually called Dene or Emerald class. They were called C class, D class. But anyway, um, I mean, they were called both, but regardless. Um, so for these ships here, uh, you know, you're going to want to decide, think of a light cruiser 
in some ways we think of a light cruiser as a screen and it is a screen and it is you know it is a light ship but it's basically a half step up to being a capital ship I think it's a good idea to think of it that way. So you don't want to build a lot of light cruisers. Um, they're very the hull itself. Let's look at how much does a light cruiser cost? The early cruiser hull here, right? With nothing except the engine on it, it costs two thousand two hundred. Right? That's twice the cost of a fully decked out destroyer. Four times the cost of a destroyer hull. What the destroyer hull cost? Early destroyer hull. Yeah, 490. All right, so that's the cheapest. I mean, obviously, you have to at least put a turret on it, but the cheapest destroyer you can build, 638. The cheapest light cruiser you can build, oops, cheapest light cruiser you can build is 2,585. So it's four to five times the cost of a destroyer. So I don't recommend building a lot of light cruisers. I recommend taking the ones you have and upgrading them. That's the whole point of this guide. So uh, the best stat to increase on a light cruiser is going to be light attack. So light cruiser battery two, light cruiser battery two. Uh, we could upgrade this one too. Uh, generally speaking, I don't recommend taking things off ships. Uh, if you're if you're trying to because you, what you're trying to do here when you're designing a refit and this is I'm going to kind of go a little bonkers here and go really crazy on the light attack right because it's a very powerful stat. Um, but if you're if you're going to I might I might upgrade the anti air too, but think about a light cruiser as as a more as a more kind of long term ship. You want this hull to last and you want it to kill a lot of ships and. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't, you, you're not going to spam light cruisers. So if you're going to do something like refit 30 light cruisers, which believe me, it's worth it, um, then, you know, make something that's going to last. So what, what are we getting here for just under 2000 refit cost? We're getting 16 light attack. Yeah, this is probably a little bit excessive. 16 light attack, bit of sub detection, a lot of range. And we're not even losing much speed because of the Euro ship builders. So this is probably a bit excessive, but again, think about it. That's less than the cost of just building the hull of a new light cruiser without even putting any armor on it, without even doing anything. So if I go back here, we could do a little bit more of a moderate version of this. You know, again, try not to, I mean, if you replace the, the the torpedo, suddenly you're like losing, you're trading a stat for another, and it, it becomes harder to rationalize this cost. But if we were to just do this. Might even it might even be worth sticking, depending on if you have the radar tech available. Yeah, probably this is probably worth it. Stick a stick a level four radar on that sucker. Like sixteen sixty six. The only thing I'm not doing is just upgrading that gun because it actually costs. Remember, it it costs you to take something off, so that starts to be a less, you know, it's a cost that's harder to justify. But again, what we're getting here is 17.4 light attack for. So we're getting we're getting at least one light attack per 100 units of production. Okay, so there's no way you're ever gonna get anywhere close to that rate of that level of firepower per 100 units of production cost building new ships there's no way okay so this is this is pretty good i would call this a c class i would call this a c class refit like that okay that's a pretty good that's a pretty good uh, refit for an old for an old cruiser it's going to make those old cruisers really deadly um you know this this cruiser has more light attack than the modern one there uh d class Again, I wouldn't touch this torpedo tube there. Just stick a stick a light cruiser battery on it and go for radar. Uh, just so you guys know, fire control systems. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but they increase basically all your attack stats. So they're 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 if you're gonna if you're gonna um, go up for a if you're, if you're you know, if you're going to make a, a ship, they, they don't cost it costs like 40 production to do too. So it's like always worth. It. So this is this is what this I would do this here. Um, 
uh the the radar with the yero ship builders um is just too good to not put on it um but again i you know i wouldn't start doing things like taking things off when you're refitting that that's crazy um you know okay it's weird to have torpedoes on a light cruiser uh the royal navy is weird but um at this point i i wouldn't spend like am i going to trade torpedo attack for light attack and spend more production doing it that to me starts to be a little bit hard to justify so there's d class here there's like five of these uh this one here i probably would just do radar fire control and secondary battery so 992 for six light attack and all this stuff here probably worth doing as well as well as remember um i would find if you're if you're going to do this euro ship builders thing Find a reason to refit all your ships because just the range, the sub detection, and the speed, or even just the range and the speed, is worth the refit cost. So if you if you want to be really stingy and you don't think you need all that stuff, hell, you can even just do this. Oh, that's actually not very cost effective. You can even just do something like oh, still still five hundred. Okay, you could find the cheapest refit possible. Basically, is what I'm trying to say here. Find the cheapest refit possible. I think it is the fire control. Yep. Uh, and, and right away, you also get the max speed and the max range by doing any refit. Uh, so, yeah, but I would I would probably go a little bit better than that. Something like this and this. And, you know, I'd probably do the anti-air too, because keep in mind the... Um, keep in mind your fire control system. Your fire control system uh, also affects your anti-air. Um, mind you, what's the cost? Yep, that's worth it. That's worth it. It's it's you know for for fifty production costs for this and like something like fifty production costs for that, you're getting a little boost anti air. Never hurts. Never hurts. But uh, you know what you decide to refit, how you decide to do it is 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 entirely up to you. This is what the E class refit. Uh, and yeah, like I said, don't design all your templates at the start like I'm doing here. Obviously, I cheated in a bunch of stuff. Uh, design them as you get better technologies and work your way up. Like I said, work your way up through through the, the smallest hulls to the biggest hulls. Uh, Leander class here. Uh, I wouldn't touch this. Stick a battery on it. If you want to use this as a... If you want to use this as a... patrol ship, then... do the radar, sonar, and the upgrade this guy. That's 747. So if you do want to use cruisers, uh, this is a fast one. So it goes 38.4 knots with the Euro Shipbuilders upgrade. Still slower than our 40 knot destroyer, though. So still, still slower than our our um, our uh, 40 destroyer. So I would I would tend to use these light cruisers as screens rather than just rather than um, escorts. Because we can also build a lot of those destroyers really fast. If if I you know the the Royal Navy starts with I think thirty two or thirty. Once you build out the ones that start in your production queue, um, you're gonna have something like thirty five light cruisers. I don't really see building more than that. I don't really see. I don't know. I I, I think it's probably a waste of shipyards to build more light cruisers. So so you know, I I don't really mind if the refits for these cost a little bit more. Um, so I'm only gonna refit them. Like I'm, I'm gonna try and keep these ships for the whole game and use them throughout. Um, so yeah, something like that. Something like that is gonna give me 12.3. So again, we're almost at one light attack per 100 unit of refit here. Plus, we're getting the sub detection, the surface detection. Yeah. So I'm repeating myself here, but you get the idea. You get the idea. I'll do one more under class refit, and then we'll look at a, a battleship just for kicks, because uh, those are also worth refitting for sure. Just, I wouldn't bother refitting your capital ships until you, until you've done your your screens, because that's where we're getting the most bonus here. Um, go, I don't know, maybe maybe you maybe you want to, but yeah. So this guy here, so here's an example of one that I really wouldn't touch anything up here, again, because I I can't I personally can't rationalize refitting, refitting um like removing something and putting it putting something else on uh, except this slot here. It makes sense, but yeah, six point nine. So a little bit, little bit more expensive, getting a little bit less 
for our for our refit here, but still, I think there's only actually three of these. If you just finish the ones in the production queue, you only ever have three of these town class ones. So let's take a look at a battleship, which again, I, I would not recommend doing this. Uh, first of all, you're not going to be able to as the UK early on because you're going to be uh, limited by the London Naval Treaty. But uh, in fact, the smart way to refit this ship would probably be to just stick... I would wait until you get better fire control, maybe. But yeah, uh, sticking a level 4 radar on it, refit cost would only be 1,000. And you would get a whole bunch of stuff here. Surface detection, sub detection. Um, if you wanted to, you could stick another battery on it or something, but that's going to just slow it down. Look at how much it costs to stick a heavy battery. Like, I wouldn't bother. Yeah, uh, in terms of heavy ships, just throwing, like, just look at how adding a radar onto this adds to just the radar. So, adding a radar onto this ship, and you could you could potentially refit the same both of these with the same template, or you could do one template for each. Uh, Nelson class here. Nelson class has heavier guns, heavier armor. Uh, this is the most heavily armored just uh, battleship that there's only two of these Nelson and Rodney um, there we go right away we're getting a big boost from that uh, the other thing you could upgrade if you wanted to on a battleship is go to your text here uh, if you go to, uh, if you go down to root fire control and then two, yeah. So if you if you if you do if you you know if you really want to, I I find I'm I don't usually find myself researching these texts um, as as the UK just because I find I'm just not not really in short supply of capital ships. Uh, I can afford to lose one or two, um, but you know strictly speaking, if you wanted to do the optimal battleship refit, I think the most bang for your buck would be to fire control 3 and radar 4 on it and right away that's a refit cost of 1100 so you're getting a huge amount like 4.8 heavy attack 1.2 light attack a little bit of anti-air sub detection detection that's a pretty big that's a pretty big boost these these are going to have the best these are going to be the most effective ways to refit because the batteries are just so expensive any guns you're throwing on this are just so expensive. You'd never touch the armor. You'd never touch the engine. Putting on extra guns is going to cost you too much. If you do want to refit anti-aircraft, um, the techs for that are here. So that's your anti-aircraft 3. The air 3, anti-air plus 12%, minus 1% speed. That does slow down your ships. Cost 150. Uh, also, what's kind of cool here is like the production cost is only 30 more, so it's probably worth it to upgrade anti air most of the time on most ships. Um, generally speaking, your best solution for anti air is to just have green air using interceptors, but still probably worth it. I don't know. Is it is it worth it going down here? That's a tank anti air. All the way down here at 43, we have anti-air 4, production cost 190. So, yeah, if, if you do find yourself researching this then and, and refitting ships late in the game, then uh, by all means, that's... Uh, no, and I know that there are some strategies some people are using. Um, some people are using some of the cannons off of these on their tanks. So, again, you know, there's a lot of synergy now between the naval stuff and the armor with the radios and anti-aircraft and... You know, if you're if you're if you are building like motorized or sorry armored, what do you call it? Um, Self-propelled anti-air and stuff like that. If you are, you know, or just if you find yourself going down this path uh, for flak or something, um, keep in mind you can put these guns on your ships as well. So, and now here we go. So the first refit has started there, and, and just watch how fast this goes. Like it looks kind of daunting to have like. 50 ships in your queue like this you feel like it's just never going to finish but like no every few days we're getting this is just working our way through the subs here like three days per sub bonkers yeah um 
this is the strategy. Uh, I I think in a in a nutshell, uh, you know, don't refit engines. Don't you know? Don't refit engines. Don't refit armor. Um, but uh, I would use your shipyards exclusively, use your dockyards exclusively for refits until you have refit every light ship in your fleet. Then start building new ships. So by about 1938 or 39, depending on how you're doing your refits, uh, you'll free up your dockyards and start building, uh, start building new ships. But yeah, you'll be able to get two of these going at once, once everything starts here. Kind of fun to watch them pop out like that one by one but and i've tested this um and as i said you can refit every ship in the royal navy by early to mid 1939 depending on what you put on them uh and just that euro shipbuilding um bonus is huge so different countries are gonna do different refits based on what they need but refitting is always better than building new ships so uh that's my uh, naval tutorial a bit on the long side but i hope it was helpful and uh i'll see you guys next time Ciao.